we are live. We're live on that on the face FaceTime. Hello. <laughs> Introduce Dawson at the end of this, an okay. end of announcements. Okay. Good morning. Can you hear me? All righty. It is good to see your smiling faces. It is good to see your shiny cars. We are so glad to be back together. I have a few announcements. Um, I've been saving them up for a while, so get ready. And after we're done here uh, with the announcements, we're going to celebrate our resurrected Lord who was, who is, and who will come back. First of all, 
If you have not done it, you can tune your radio into 98.1 in your car and you should be able to hear the entire service there. Hard as this is to believe, there is a church softball organizational meeting on Tuesday. If you are interested in playing, please see John Rake. He is going to go to the meeting, find out what the scoop is, and let us know. So get in touch with John if you are willing and able to play church softball this Sunday. You can email, you can call, you can Facebook message us. Just let us know. Wednesday night Bible study, 7 o'clock, Facebook Live. Pastor Terry will be back. And the topic this week is the forgiveness of sins. So join us uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, on Facebook Live, and we're going to get it right this week. We will be there waiting for you. Hot dog dinner this Friday, May the 29th. If you are a part of this or if you want to be a part of this, please see Vicki Height. She's here today. She's right down here on the end waving her arms around. We're going to serve some community places, and we're going to serve the community in the parking lot. So if you want to be part of that, let us know. If you want to make a donation, you can do that. And let me tell you, while we're speaking of donations, Gary Best, stop and wave your red bucket around. At the end of the service, you can, as you leave on the bridge, Matt and Gary will have red containers like that to take up tithes and offerings. Thank you so much for your faithfulness through all of this craziness. And we have actually five high school graduates this year. Um, Sydney Westbrook, Bradley B., Josh Sanford, and Cole and Corbin Alkire are all graduating high school this year. So we are going to be putting tributes on Facebook. Amanda has been working on that, so watch for those. And hopefully, eventually, we will get to celebrate with them together here. So speaking of Cole Alkire, Cole Alkire is in basic training for the Marines. And this Memorial Day weekend, it seems like an appropriate time to let you all know that and to ask you to pray for Cole. It is also the time we want to recognize our veterans and our members of our congregation who are actively serving. Um, so if you are a member of, if you are a veteran of or actively engaged in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the National Guard, or the Reserves, could you please stand up, wave your hands, or toot your horn? And now, in appreciation of that, could the rest of you toot your horns or give them a round of applause? Thank you very much. And let me say, too, that Derek Kettering is not with us but he is actively serving out in the state of Washington. So remember him too in your thanksgivings and your prayers. And, oh, and Luke, that's right, Luke Martin is also serving. He is in Ku Kuwait and is probably not gonna be back till September. So please keep Luke Martin in your prayers as well. Finally, what a day to make your first appearance at church. We have a very special guest here today and I think he's coming up right now. Slowly but surely, he's making his way. He's still pretty young. This is Matt and Nicole Taylor and their little son, Dawson. And they are going to get up here, and you're going to be able to see him. Can you make it? <laughs> Say hi. Very good. Yeah. All right, how about a hello to Dawson? That is a memorable welcome to our church family indeed. So they're going to carefully make their way down off the platform. Our praise team is going to carefully make, well actually Matthew is going to carefully make his way up here. And we are going to get ready to worship together. <laughs> Good morning, First Church. How are we doing today? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, our call to worship this morning is um, in the Psalms. Uh, we're going to be in Psalm 86. Hear these words from, uh, from David. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. 
All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Christ, how wondrous and how beautiful you are, and, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you together this morning and worship you uh, as one corporate body, Lord. Uh, and so uh, today, just in this multitude of blessing, we honor you and glorify you this morning uh, as the God who has created us and redeemed us and drawn us uh, into your loving embrace. Uh, so, uh, Lord, in this time, in this place, uh, please posture our hearts towards you, bring us your wisdom. Uh, and, uh, and guide us in your truth this morning. In your most beloved name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, please posture yourself towards worship this morning. I love it. Well, this is different. <clears throat> Let's praise the Lord this morning. Got words in there, I think, uh, that uh, Gary and uh, Matt, yeah, not Billy, Matt. So thank you so much. Let's praise him this morning.
much, Lord. We just want to sing to you today, and we want to raise a hallelujah.
go to prayer, I just want to praise you again, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His own. exciting day for us how much fun we're having we're so thankful Lord that we can be here today without the rain we're thankful to be here together to worship you and praise you and our main prayer today is that you will help us with all of our hearts and voices to praise you, to lift you up, to feel your presence, to be together as a church family. Just a moment, Nikki's going to sing. Sing, Lord, through her. Minister through the song that she is to sing today. Speak to all of our hearts. I pray, God, that you'll help me to speak your word today with the anointing of your spirit, the Holy Spirit. Just again, thank you for this day. We're so glad to be here together to worship you. And we thank you. Be with us throughout this service. Bless us, Lord, as we try to be a blessing to you, I pray. Amen.
Wow. Thank God there's hope. There's hope. There was hope for the Jews after they had forgotten God. There's hope for America. I'd like to speak to you from the book of Nehemiah today as a way of illustration. Or uh, to start out, I'm going to read some verses. After 70 years of exile... And 40 years of wandering in circles in the desert. Miraculously, they were, in, they were inhabiting the promised land. And I want you to know that if we're faithful one day, we will miraculously be together in the promised land. So the wall was completed on the 25th. 52 days. It was a miracle. They were now in the promised land. That land that had taken them so long to get to. When all of our enemies heard about this, in these 52 days, all surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of God. And then over in chapter 7, after the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers and singers and Levites, which is the priest, were appointed. And then over in chapter 8, when the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon, and he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men and women and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high platform built for the occasion. He opened the book and all the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, saying, Amen! Amen! Then they bowed down, and they worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Then down in verse 9, Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest, and the scribes, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to them all, This day is sacred to the Lord your God. I believe this to be a sacred day to the Lord our God. Then over in verse 13, On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and the Levites, gathered around Ezra, the scribe, to give attention to the words of the law. And over in verse 18, day after day, for seven days, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They celebrated the feast for seven days. And on the eighth day, in accordance with the regulation, there was an assembly. They all assembled together for a first time in a long time. <clears throat> Now in chapter 9, standing on the stairs were the Levites, the priests, who called with a loud voice to the Lord their God and said, Stand up and praise the Lord your God who is from everlasting 
to everlasting. Thus are the words of our holy and loving God. I'd like to speak to you this morning about a call to praise. In, in verse 1 of chapter 9, this chapter opens with the great day of fasting and humiliation. The people were calling upon their God very humbly and very sincerely. It was the day of public confession of their sins and their father's sins. So you see, they had heard these words of the book read now for seven days and they heard how God had blessed and God had honored and how they had forgotten God. And they confessed their sins and they confessed the sins of their fathers. And for three hours, God's word, the book of the law, was read. And for three hours, the people confessed their sins and worshiped God. They cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. A call from various priests from the tribe of the Levites saying forever we will must forever we must stand up and bless the Lord and I say to us this morning no matter what we go through no matter what's happening no matter what our country does we must forever stand up and praise the Lord our God furthermore yes honk your horns and praise the God amen Hey, that's so much fun, I may never want to go back inside. <laughs> Blessed be his glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. What brought all this on? What happened to these people that they praised and confessed and humiliated themselves and fell on their faces before God? They had been reading and hearing of the great things that God had done for their forefathers. They had forgotten, but now they knew how God was there all along until their souls were stirred up from their silent depths to bless him who was almighty to save and to keep. Our Lord is almighty to save. Our Lord is almighty to keep us. They had been reading and hearing about these great things and then a review of chapter 9 gives us powerful reasons why we should stand. We have reasons to stand today and praise our God, praise our Lord, and glorify Him. He says, stand up and praise the Lord. We are to stand up and bless and praise God because first, He is the God of creation. Amen. Amen. He says, You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host. You made the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. These are the words of the priests. The earth is God's handiwork. Yesterday, uh, our new home, all we have is one station, uh, public broadcasting. Uh, whoo! <laughs> there was a show on there yesterday about some saying that it was evolution and others say it was God, but there was some one on there that said he knew where we came from. He knew what our purpose was. Well, I want you to know he was wrong. The Lord our God made everything, including us. We should also bless and praise God because he is the God of grace. These people understood for the first time in a long time that their God was a God of grace. They said, you are the Lord God who chose Abraham and brought him out of Ur and named him Abraham. You found his heart faithful to you, and you made a covenant with him to give his descendants the promised land. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. They acknowledged that God had kept his promise. By faith, Abraham went out from Ur, but it was by grace that he was chosen. He wasn't worthy, neither are we worthy, but by grace 
We've been chosen. By grace we are saved today. We are offered grace because God loves us. Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. He offered grace. Amen. Amen. That The grace that came to Abraham through the call of God comes to us in the gospel of Jesus Christ. All who accept the call of Jesus, like Abraham, will be led to a new life and will receive a new name and will end up going to a new place. And that place is called heaven. And I long to be there someday. Amen. That's worthy of, of a honk. Uh, you might want to roll your windows down and get your hands out and let me see them hands from the cars. The child of God enters the new life. He's born again. It's our promise from God. There, there is new life in Christ. They desired to praise Him that day because He is the God who answers prayer. He answered their prayer. You saw the suffering, they said, of our forefathers in Egypt. You heard the cry of the Red Sea when they were about to be forced into the Red Sea and God heard their cries and departed the Red Sea. God sees our suffering. God sees our afflictions. You have not gone through one thing in these past nine weeks that God hasn't noticed and hasn't seen. God sees our suffering he hears our cry. When we come to our Red Sea, He hears us. All we need to do is call out to Him. Amen. Amen. I've been weary a few times in the last several weeks, but I want you to know we serve a God who never grows weary. His ear never grows weary. He'll always hear us. His... And he never tires from hearing our cries for help. You're not going to bother God by crying for help. He looks for your cry for help. He, he hears every cry for help. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got so much I'd like to say, but I better stick to the message. <laughs> it's so good to be here today. I'm so proud of all of you. So proud of you. The fact that he rewards those who diligently seek Him, diligently seek Him as worthy of our praise, worthy of our thankfulness. I'm going to have to hurry or we'll never get through. <laughs> He's also the God of deliverances. They said in verse 10, you sent miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh. They you mighty right, they ate 10 of them and uh, humbled old Pharaoh against all his officials and all the people of his land, for you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians had treated them. You divided the sea so they went through on dry land, but you hurled their pursuers into the depths like a stone into the mighty waters and led them in the day by a cloud, a pillar cloud, and at night by a pillar of fire. I'm telling you, God loves us. There's nothing he won't do to deliver us. Today, Jesus keeps us safe from our enemy and leads us to eternal life. We're living in this sinful world that seems to be more sinful all the time. But our God is able to keep us. And he will keep us. The cross for our Lord Jesus Christ is the instrument which our enemies have been overthrown. When God, through Christ, upon old Golgotha, laid down his life, gave it up the ghost, <laughs> he delivered us. He delivered all who would believe in him. 
The Holy Spirit is our guiding pillar of light. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. The Holy Spirit delivers today's child of God from the bondage of darkness and the weariness of our wilderness walk. All this week, I had some visions come to me of the old life. God showed me who I was before Christ. He showed me where I went and the things I'd done. He showed me the home that we lived in. Oh my, it was humbling. But thanks God be to Jesus for deliverance, for a changed life. God delivers. Praise God. He delivers. Amen. Then in verse 13, he is the God of revelation. They said, you came down on Mount Sinai. You spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and laws that are just and right and decrees and commands that are good. You spoke to them and made known your Sabbath. We ought to be thankful to God that he's given us these statues that are that is right. He's given us the word that we know what is right and, and what is pure and what God wants from us. He has given us commands, commandments that enlighten the eyes, David said. God's word reveals God. God's word reveals his son. We needed to know about the Father. We needed to know about the Son, our Savior. And we need to know about the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for being a God of revelation. Thank you for your word. Amen. I thank God this morning that he's a revealing God. I thank him for that day many years ago when he revealed to me that I was a sinner, that I needed Jesus, I needed salvation. I thank God that he still reveals to me every day. He's revealed to me throughout the years. He speaks to me. He is a revealing God. He lets us know exactly where we stand. Thank you, Jesus. Further, he's the God who supplies all our needs. Verse 15, he gave them bread from heaven. He gave them water out of the rock and promised them that they should possess the land. Jesus came from heaven. He is our rock. He's given to us great and precious promises. Heaven is our promised land. There's not a whole lot difference between that day and this day. It's just all those prophecies have been fulfilled. He came. He lived. He died. And now he's our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. A provision that covered their present and their future needs. He, he provides for us our present and our future needs. The hunger of those who walk with God can only be satisfied with the bread of heaven. Jesus is that bread of heaven. The, the search can only be quenched with the water from the smitten rock. He is our smitten rock. He was smitten. He was broken. He was beaten. And they put him in a tomb. And now he lives. For as he said on the third day, he would be resurrected. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's worthy of our praise today. He's worthy. <laughs> Lastly, for this other great fact, that he is the God of long suffering and mercy. Aren't you thankful that he's long-suffering? Aren't you thankful for his mercy today? Verse 19, because of your great compassion. These are the words of the people who after those days of reading the word and God speaking to their heart and they confessed and, and were praising him. Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the desert. 
God will never abandon America if we'll just repent. Call on him. By day the pillar of cloud did not cease to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. They had tempted God. They had been disobedient to God. They were forgetful. They had forgotten God. They didn't even think of his wonders until they began to read the book when the book was brought out and they began to be to remember and hear again the wonders of God. They, they had been rebellious. They had even appointed a certain captain to return them back to Egypt and back to bondage. They were idolatrous. They had made a molten calf in verses 16 and 17 and 18. Yet in all his manifold mercies, after all this, he was a God that was ready to pardon them graciously and mercifully, slow to anger and of great kindness. That's the kind of God we serve. You're here today. And you think your sins are so great that you can't be forgiven. Well, you're greatly wrong. Our God is a forgiving, forgiving God. There's hope for America. I believe there's hope. God help us to stand for him in our communities and where we're at and Stand up for truth and remember that he's a holy God and that he can help us live right and be an influence on our world, on our community. Forty years in the desert, they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. Uh, praise the Lord. As they read from the book of the law, they realized the marvelous goodness of their God in the past. Their hearts began to burn within them, and no wonder. Why are our hearts so irresponsible, responsive today to all the manifestations of His wonder-working grace toward us in Jesus Christ? Shall we not stand up this day at the remembrance of his love and bless his gracious name forever and ever. And so I stand up in the way, I say stand up in the way we can stand up today. Stand up by raising your hand out the windows. Stand up by raising your hand wherever you're at. Stand up for, by honking your horns for Jesus. Flash your lights in celebration. God bless you. We'll have us we'll have a closing hymn at this time. God bless you. And uh, we'll meet here again like this next Sunday. Uh, amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry. As we close today in song, um, we love you, Lord. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come.
Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this church family, those who are here and those who are at home. Thank you for the reminders in Dawson that new life is in your hands. Lord, but also those who are suffering and those who are hurting are in your hands. Those who are serving here and those who are serving far away are in your hands. But thank you most of all that you are our God that you are merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and mercy. We praise your name, we thank you, Lord, and we ask you, help us to be more like Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray, and because of you that we celebrate. Amen. Amen. All right. Just, just a couple words about exiting. We'd like to keep this orderly. So if the first row of cars could head to the bridge, Gary and Matt will be there, Pastor and Susan are there, and then we'll just go a row at a time after that. So be orderly, let's avoid accidents. It's wonderful to see you, see you back here next week. Well, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Instead yeah. of half the people still being in here chatting. Is, it's, the, it's the old people who will fly out first. Well, that, and then they're going to get stopped here. She's like on it. She was. <laughs>